everybody, my name is Benjamin Bloom and I have just witnessed Brentford 2, Sheffield United 3 at Griffin Park in the rain on a Tuesday night. But as a neutral, it was a great game. Topsy-turvy one. This one, Brentford taking the lead, Sheffield United turning it round, Brentford equalising and then Sheffield United getting the winner. Here is what happened. Brentford line up. Bentley in goal. Dalsgaard, Konza, Mepham, Barbe across the back. McLeod and McEachran uh, sitting in midfield. Judge off to the right. Sawyers in the 10 position. Canos to the left. And Mapai, the top scorer in the league up front. A um, couple of changes for Sheffield United. Um, Henderson in goal. Uh, Basham, Egan and O'Connell, the normal centre-halves. Freeman, right wing-back. Stevens, left wing-back. Norwood, the playmaker in front of them. Um, Lundstrom comes in. So no Duffy, which was interesting. Um, Blades fans, let me know what you think the thinking was behind that. Uh, Fleck, as usual, in the midfield there. And up front, it was McGoldrick and Washington, so no sharp Washington coming in there. As I say, very, very wet and very slippy. Certainly a feature for the first 20 minutes. Players all over the place slipping. Um, it looked like the plan from Brentford from the start was to push Canos very high and wide and judge on the other side, try and hold those wing backs back for Sheffield United that can be such a danger and it seemed to be working. Brentford score with their very, very first opportunity. Sawyers has it in the 10 position. He slides it through to Mopai. He is into the penalty area off to the left-hand side. He has one touch, hits it early from the angle with the left foot and catches Henderson on the near post. Henderson gets a hand to it and it goes in on the near post. I haven't seen that back, but I would have thought Henderson, given the form he's been in, would be expecting to save that. I think Mapai catches him out with the early shot. Great stuff from him. He did all he did, all he could. He got it out of his feet. He hit the shot. He gets the goal. But I think possibly Henderson should have done better, like I say. Um, Mapai, top scorer in the league. I don't know how many that is now. I haven't checked the stats, but um, great start for Brentford. Um, straight up the other end though. And I think it's McGoldrick down the left-hand side. It's the ball into the channel. And um, they've got men coming forward. He cuts it back. Lundstrom's into the box. He smashes it with the right foot. Bentley completely beaten and it smashes off the crossbar. Could have been 1-1 straight away, but it was 1-1 after nine minutes. Unbelievable start this. Um, Stevens forces the corner down the left-hand side. Norwood goes over, so he's taking the corner right-footed from the left-hand side. He hits an in-swinging corner, beautiful one, into the near post. It glances off someone. I think O'Connell and Konza were there and into the corner of the net. No Sheffield United player celebrates as they run back, so I am assuming that that was an own goal. And by the horrible rules, Norwood doesn't get an assist, which he really deserves for that one. So 1-1 one, one, straight away, um, nine minutes gone. Is the game going to settle down? Is it heck on 14 minutes? It's 2-1 to Sheffield United. They've literally been behind and clawed back and taken the lead within the first 15 minutes. Ball into the channel down the left, not properly cleared down the right, sorry. Um, Freeman picks it up. Um, he recycles it, he plays it inside, and this is a brilliant goal. So he plays it square along the kind of trajectory of the, of the box, laterally across the pitch, if you know what I mean. And Norwood is going to come in on it, and he's going to use the fact that the ball's coming into him to create extra spin. He hits the shot, he chops across it, so he swivels his body to hit the shot, into the far corner, it loops, it curls, it dips down and lands into the net. A really, really beautiful goal by Norwood. Um, if you watched my list of top players for each team, I had him at number one. And within 15 minutes there, he's kind of set up the first one for the own goal. And a superb goal from Norwood to make it 2-1. Crazy start to the game. Um, Basham smashes Mopai on 16. He takes a yellow card there. But it's a big chance for the Blades on 22. Um, into the back post from the left-hand side. Centre-halves don't deal with it. Real mess there. McGoldrick, he swivels on it. He has time to adjust his feet. He swivels. He hits the shot pretty much as well 
as he can do. And um, Bentley throws himself to the left-hand side and makes the save. It was one of those ones where everyone trots out the cliche. If he miskicks that one and it bounces or falls the keeper, it's almost like he hit that too cleanly, but could and probably should have been 3-1 there on 22. On 30, Sawyers and Canos, um, great interchange there. Canos comes in off the left. It's a really good dribble, but it's not a good shot. He's 25 yards out, moves into the middle of the, middle of the goal. Hits it hard, right-footed, but way over. Um, Norwood, dangerous free kick here. He's in form, so we expect great things straight at Bentley there. Um, nice build-up on 42 by McEachran. There's a lucky bounce into the middle. Canos again, he comes in on it. He hits the volley right-footed and over it goes. Not too far over, but he was quite well marked, let's just say. Uh, 44, Fulsom and Goldrick in the box. He shoots well again. Another good chance um, he's not doing anything wrong with this, but they're all blocked out. Um, Dalsgaard this time. So, half-time, very, very interesting. Watch this one. Brentford scored, really, with their first... You can't say it's against the run of play if it's a fifth-minute goal. They hadn't built up ahead of steam. They just struck um, Sawyers with the ball through and Mopo with the early shot. And then, really, that stung the blades into action. They get the goal from the corner and a brilliant goal from Nord. And they could have gone on. Obviously, Lundstrom hit the post at 1-0 down and two efforts from McGoldrick. I'm not attaching any blame to McGoldrick, um, but on another day, he scores He scores both of them. Um, they're just well, well defended, well blocked and maybe lacking a little bit of luck there. Um, the sense from the crowd, Brentford fans getting a touch impatient, let's just say. I think what the key was here was speed of passing and speed of attack. Um, Sheffield United, we know what they're going to do, and it's these players sprinting forward and people being prepared to play a through ball, play a ball into the channel, stretch people and break the lines. Whereas Brentford, it was slow and they didn't break the lines. In fact, the only time they did was when Sawyers played through to um, Mulpai. And the slower it got, the easier it was for Sheffield United to... Um, fall back in and of course when you play three centre backs against a team like Brentford who want to pass right through the middle of you got very clustered up there so I think Chris Wilder got that one right and Brentford needed a fourth and a fifth gear in their passing just to speed it up and get through um, in we go into the second half no changes um, overload on the left here good start uh, first five minutes of the second half from Sheffield United they, they came out um, with a nice press and good energy. McColdrick, again, space opens up for him. I think Stevens has gone down the left, cuts it back. Um, he hits it well again, and someone throws themselves at it, and it's deflected Why? Well, Excuse me. McGoldrick, three good chances. Didn't do a lot wrong with them. And again, could have had a hat-trick on another day. Um, 50 minutes. Cannot, excuse me, sorry, struggling here. Wins it off uh, Freeman, high up. Knocked down into the box. Sawyer's... Um, blasts it over from 25 yards on 52. Barbe, 35 yard at skids wide. And then the substitution starts. So Marcondes comes in for Canos. Canos did get on the end of a couple of things, but wasn't really in the game too much in respects of building up attacks. Um, kind of a bit marooned and well dealt with, I would suggest. Uh, Clark comes in for McGoldrick. I'd be really interested in Blades fans' thoughts on this. I know Clark's a bit of a hero there, but they always seem to tail off when McGoldrick comes off. I don't know if anyone agrees with me. I'm, I'm sure there's stats that sound totally wrong about that. But they seem a bit of a different team when he goes off and he never finishes a game. So I'd be interested if, if I'm right or wrong about that. Uh, Mopai down in the box. Ref, um, he kind of gets bumped. Uh, ref, not interested in this one. But the Brentford fans are interested on 64 minutes. Having McGoldrick gone off, they get the equaliser. They didn't really... Um, there wasn't a sense they were going to play through, but they did build up a bit of a head of steam and kind of get the team shape forward, which Sheffield United stopped them doing so well during a lot of this game. Um, it comes to Sawyers on the edge of the box, and I kept saying what Brentford lacked all night was someone to break the lines, either a pass through or a dribble. And Sawyers gets a good first touch, and he beats his man this time. He goes around him. Um, he kind of gets the run on him into the right-hand corner of the box, gets a bit of space. He smashes it across, um, kind of hovering it across the floor, just off the ground. And it kicks up off someone. 
I'm sorry, I'm in the stand. I think Twitter tells me it was Fleck. So another own goal that end. It takes a kick up and kind of loops up a little bit, maybe to distract Henderson in goal. But it's 2-2. Two, two. And probably, if you're a Sheffield United fan at that point, you're probably a little bit miffed because there were plenty of chances to extend the lead to two goals. And uh, Brentford are back in it. 2-2. Two, two. Uh, straight down the other end, like they did... Um, Fleck, lovely curving cross from the left-hand side. Clark, oh, he's got to hit the target here. Six yards out, climbs. It's almost like he wanted more of a challenge on it. He's like, where's my marker? And he glances the header wide. Probably should have been 3-2 there. Coots comes in for Lundrum on 67. On 68, really interesting one here. Washington is flying through. He comes up to halfway. Um, it's a counter-attack. He's one-on-one. -on -one and McEachern comes over, completely cleans him out. Oh, obviously, uh, first instinct is, oh, is that an obvious goal-scoring opportunity? But Washington, before we can figure it out, jumps back up and he actually starts um, running again and he dribbles it uh, towards the goal, cuts back, hits the shot and wins the corner. So some credit there to Washington. He could have just gone down, but he forces the corner. Obviously, the ultimate thing there, he could have got the goal. Ref pulls out the yellow card. So I think everyone does their job there, except for McEachern, who's trying to do a pro foul and doesn't stop Washington conclusively for his yellow card card and then here comes the winning goal on 72 me thinking McGoldrick's gone off and now Brentford have equalized Sheffield United they didn't force too much pressure here to get this goal it goes into the channel on the right hand side for Washington and if you're a Brentford fan you'll be really disappointed with this because he's given far far too much time um, in that crossing position. Got to stop this cross. He takes a couple of touches, I think. He's on the right-hand side. He's going to get it out of his feet. Going to cross with the right foot. It's good movement from Clark because he doesn't gamble. He pulls himself uh, back. He allows Washington to make the cutback. Decisive play here. It's a really firm cross from Washington and a first-time finish from Clark. Lovely finish right into the corner. The sheer pace on it, if you if you hit the cross hard and you take it first time, how's the keeper got time to, to react and readjust himself um, to save that? It's a good goal, but that cross, there wasn't enough pressure on Washington from the Brentford defence. And great character there. And Sheffield United are in the lead again. On 72, judge a trickler, right-footed, wide. Right, treble substitution here, 2-4, Brentford 1 for Sheffield United. So, Odebarjo comes on for McLeod, De Silva comes in for McEachern. So, what happens is Sawyers and De Silva, so McEachern and McLeod are now off. Um, Sawyers and De Silva basically become the, um, the two guys who are going to make the play in the 4-2-3-1. Uh, Odebarjo goes off and kind of plays in the right-hand side. Um, of that three off the front. Sharp comes in for Washington. Um, hearty applause from the Blades fans for Washington, certainly for that assist and some powerful running. There, uh, Fleck, Daisy Cutter wide on 78. We're into 85 minutes now. Uh, Judge flips it up, volleys it right-footed from about 20 yards. It flies just wide, and Henderson was interested in this one, throws himself off the goal, hits the post, holding the net up behind the goal. Pretty close there. Um, Judge with a free kick here, and Blades fans would have had not nice memories of Joe Allen doing this. He tries to swing it around the wall, but Henderson is not going to be caught up this side. Makes the save from the uh, from the free kick and from the corner Dalsgaard is going to try one of those Zola flicks and straight into the arms of the grateful Henderson there's four minutes stoppage time and the Blades see it out to get their win so 3-2 crazy game here 1-0 Brentford quick swing back 2-1 2-2 uh, uh, to Brentford after uh, Sheffield United miss three or four chances to extend the lead to two goals um, and then the winner there from Clark, kind of um, not really with that much with that much pressure. So um, great game, really really um, enjoyed it. Um, I would suggest that Brentford are in a bit of a bad spot at the moment. This style of football that they've built up. Um, I was talking to someone in the ground, and we were sort of saying it looks great when it's going right. This very relaxed, control the ball pass it, control the ball. Um, but when you're up against someone like Sheffield United who are going to sprint and try and um, attack very quickly and very decisively and you know someone's got the ball and there's two players bombing forward, it does kind of show it up. And uh, someone was saying, oh, they're playing walking football. And I kind of get what they mean. I guess 
if Brentford were up against the more defensive sit back team, they can control the game. But they couldn't do that against Sheffield United, and hence they've conceded three goals and a fair amount more chances today. Um, Sheffield United will be really pleased. They've stopped a run now of one, I think one win in five or one win in six or something like that. And they've jumped up a couple of places. I know there's more games tomorrow night, but that's a that's a good um, a good result for Sheffield United tonight. Um, Norwood, just for the first half, really, really good. That's got to be him and Puki have got to be the signings of the season so far. He assists the first goal for them and it's a really beautiful goal for the second one. His influence became less in the second half as the Blaze game plan kind of changed a little bit more. They'll be really pleased with the win. They'll probably be disappointed that they conceded two goals in this game when Brentford weren't on top for for that much of it. Um, so, but that's the Chris Wilder blueprint, isn't it? It's all or nothing. No draws. You're either gonna you're either gonna win or lose, and there's gonna be loads of goals, and you're gonna leave everything out there. So, interested um, to hear from Blade fans where you think you're gonna go on. Can you now go on and get a, a sort of a few more wins there? Why was Duffy left out? I don't know who they've got. Um, at the weekend probably being saved for a more difficult game um good job there by Wilder and good job by Sheffield United um Brentford it's not looking good um Thomas Frank's only won one game and I, I don't know he's, he's been in charge for seven and lost six and won one or six and lost one right I don't know the exact stats but he's only won one game and he's lost all the others since he's been in charge and um fans a little bit impatient when this like I say when this style doesn't work it looks languid, it looks lazy, it looks too slow. I can understand where the fans are coming from, but you can't change a philosophy like that um, on a dime. And they're going to have to gonna have to stick to it and hope it comes good. I'm always told Brentford's metrics um, always have them on top, but they, they were not in charge of this game today. They scored... Um, they scored the two times, and this is fairly simple um, football logic. If the other team's got all the men behind the ball then someone either needs to beat a man or play a pass through the lines. And for all they moan at him, the only guy who could do that was Romain Sawyers. He got the assist for the first goal and he made the sprint and beat a man for the second goal. So um, if you're a Brentford fan and you're having a go at Sawyers, I I understand he looks a bit languid, but he was the only guy who um, sort of did that today. So um, interesting to see where Brentford go from this um, I think I don't know whether they've dropped another place, but certainly they're likely to um, with a few of these lower teams picking up points. I need to check the results. So, look, if you're a Sheffield United fan, hit me up in the comments. Let me know what you thought of the performance and the team selection and whether you can now go on and regain some of that form. If you're a Brentford fan, where are you going with this? And does there need to be some kind of plan B? Do you stick with the same philosophy that's done you so well? And what's going to happen in January with Dean Smith possibly having some money maybe to pick a couple of players out? There's a bad scenario. If you keep losing and lose a couple of players in January, where's that going to go? Um, If you enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up. If you support either team or have anything to say about this game, please um, hit me up in the comments. Really please, a couple of um, people came in talk to me, recognise me from these videos. That's where I get all the information from to do this, is from people at games and people talking in the YouTube comments. Really appreciate it. And on Twitter, follow me at Benjamin Bloom. Let me know what you think. And really do me a solid. Hit the subscribe button. We're nearly up to three and a half hours and be great to reach that milestone. Thank you every much. Thank you everybody very much for watching and the must win game of all must win games tomorrow Ipswich versus Bristol City. I don't know if I can face it. Look out for that match review tomorrow night. Thank you for watching. See you later.